What is direct action? It's when people take direct initiative to improve their circumstances. Direct action typically applies to mutual aid and community development. This is the story of 647 Woodward Avenue in McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania. A small community just outside of Pittsburgh, McKees Rocks has seen its share of tragedy through economic decline, job loss, addiction issues, and a string of devastating fires, especially on Woodward Avenue. This video will tell the story of loss and how a few simple acts of kindness that all come out of the concept of direct action can turn that loss into the community's gain. 6407 Woodward Avenue was a two-story yellow brick house that sat in the middle of a working class neighborhood street. Most people who live in these homes have lived here for generations. In early 2017, 647 caught fire. Thankfully, no one was at home, however, the family pets did not survive. After the fire and demolition of the house, all that remained of 647 was an abandoned lot, which was left vulnerable to further blight in an already compromised community. In order to tackle this apathy and blight, the Woodward Avenue neighbors decided to have a block party to discuss what could be done. It had been years since the neighbors had gotten together. This block party forged new friendships and opened a dialogue about the future of 647. After the block party, Woodward Avenue sent out the call for volunteers to donate their time to clean up 647. The neighbors received a surprise donation of tools and offerings for the possibility of a public garden. You see, parts of McKee's Rocks are considered a food desert, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This means there's no easy access to nutritional food, which can be detrimental, especially for growing children. Engagement is key in direct action, and not being afraid to ask for help or supplies is an important component in building up a community. After the first day of cleanup, we took to social media, asking for more help and more donations. You might hear some uh, some sawing in the background. This is somebody who is also taking part in helping to beautify this abandoned lot that's behind me. Um, so what we did on Saturday was we had a team of people out here uh, removing the debris and also taking away all the weeds and the growth. Um, so now you can see that the lot is completely flat and totally ready for the mulch drop. So what we are looking for are volunteers. We're looking for people who want to come out and be a part of this beautification project over here in McKee's Rocks. 
All right, this is it, people. We got our mulch. It's in this huge truck. Um, Vasetti uh, Landscaping is the local landscaper that is donating all of this mulch in this giant truck for us. We're so pleased and excited and thankful for their contribution to the 647 Woodward Avenue. Once the call for volunteers went out, the donations poured in, and as the saying goes, if you build it, they will come. Once people see that something is happening, the natural instinct is to want to be a part of progress. Direct action can be very motivating. When engaging in direct action, the goal should be clear. Explaining and defining a goal is the only way to effectively produce change. And the phrase is, when we all do better, we all do better. And that means that when one of us does better, then it sort of acts, it sort of catches on to the rest of the community and then we all do better. So this is, a, this is a, an inclusive effort. Um, we've had a couple of people uh, respond to my request for uh, some help. As you can see, we have a lot of mulch here that we need spread out. Um, and so the purpose of mulch, in case you are not familiar with gardening techniques or things like that, the purpose of mulch is to keep the weeds down. And the weeds in Pittsburgh tend to be very gnarly and very aggressive. So the point of this is to keep the, the weeds down. And then also to um, make a very safe walking path. This abandoned lot right here um, is, a, is a very unsteady um, piece of land that people walk through day in and day out. I use it at least two times a day, at least two or three times a day when I'm out walking around. It's a shortcut to where I catch the bus when I go to downtown Pittsburgh or whatever. So what we want to do for the children's sake, for the community's sake, for everybody's sake, is we want to make this a very easy walking path. And in order to do that, we have to lay the mulch. It will keep the, the, the weeds from growing. When you have weeds that grow up, you tend to trip on them and it can be dangerous. So we're going to spread out the mulch and make it a nice, even surface for people to walk on. And that's the beginning stages of the community garden. And then eventually we're going to be doing raised beds. And what, when I say the term raised beds, some people don't, they've never heard that term before, which is understandable if you grew up in sort of an urban environment. A raised bed is, is a box, a wooden box that sits on the ground. And in that wooden box, 
is soil and compost so that you can grow vegetables and flowers and it beautifies the neighborhood. So when we all do better, we all do better. Through our work and efforts over the last few months, we've had an opportunity to meet our neighbors who actually lived inside 647. Once people started to see the 647 lot being improved, the stories started pouring in. These two girls told the story of how their cousin was born in the bathtub at 647. And on the day of the cleanup, two young boys stopped by to tell us how much they loved living in the house. They were living in the house when it burned down, but just happened to be out with the family. Unfortunately, their pets didn't survive. It's clear the house held a lot of good memories for a lot of people. After completing the mulch at 647, we added a few finishing touches, like placing the wooden logs along the outside edges of the lot to give it a more finished off look. And we installed solar lamps so that the path can be well lit at night. The story of 647 doesn't end here though. The local landlord that owns the building, which sits next to 647, is commissioning an artist to paint his new fence and envisions a McKees Rocks inspired theme painted on the side of his building, which looks over 647. His dedication to the people who've made McKees Rocks survive through some of the worst economic crashes in modern history is his way of giving back. With continued direct action, patience, and holding on to that distinct vision, we are bound to see more improvements for 647 in the future. We hope this ongoing story can offer inspiration for whatever vision you might have for your neighborhood or your community, and how simple direct action can bring changes to the community that everyone can enjoy.